Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we are going to take up a problem from fluid statics. So we are given a cross-sectional view of a solid semi-cylinder of radius r rigidly attached with a solid triangular prism. It floats on a liquid having a density of rho. So it is in contact with a smooth vertical wall over here and the part bc is not in contact with the fluid uh, and all the three sides of uh, this triangle are of equal length. Atmospheric pressure is P0, so we have to answer these four questions. So give this problem a try guys and then you can check out the solution. Okay, so this is how the cross section is looking like. So we have a semicircle of radius r and then we have a triangle whose side length is of 2r and it's an equilateral triangle. And the side view is going to look something like this where this uh, upper half is going to be a half cylinder. So this length is given to be L and this part attached with the prism is going to be a rectangle whose length is L and its width is actually side of this triangle which is 2r. So now let's talk about the forces. So in the first question, they're claiming the Bowen force acting on the object is independent of the atmospheric pressure. So what Archimedes principle actually says is that the upward Bowen force that acts, acts on an object that is immersed partially or fully in water is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid by that object. So now the weight of the displaced fluid has nothing to do with the atmospheric pressure. Essentially you can just directly take this option as this is always correct independent of what object is immersed in the liquid. Even if it is partially submerged or fully submerged the Bowen force will always be independent of the atmospheric pressure. Or if you want to prove it like you can take a small differential element something like this and we know that the fluid pressure will be acting some Something like this. So as you can see the, the, the vertical components of these forces right they will depend upon the pressure difference as you can see. So let's call the pressure fluid pressure at this point is P1 let's call the fluid pressure at this point is P2. P2 times dA minus P1 times dA uh, the vertical component of it which will be some cos theta or sin theta. This essentially should balance the dW or the weight of this part. Now when we talk about the pressure difference the P0 term anyway cancels out right. So if you do P2 minus P1 the P0 term cancels out anyway. So you can prove it that like that as well. So option A is correct. So the second option uh, it's saying what is, a norm what is a normal force exerted by this vertical wall. So let's call the normal force as some n. So this is how the fluid pressure forces are acting on our object. By symmetry we can say that if you uh, look at these two components of the pressure forces their net resultant will be in the vertical direction. We have to discuss one more thing guys. So uh, some of you guys may think that the pressure at this particular point is less than the pressure at this particular point because there is more fluid above and that is actually not true. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, as we're talking about fluid static situation, if you take any horizontal level on the fluid, the pressure over there inside the fluid must be the same. Otherwise what will happen is that there will be fluid flow from higher pressure region to lower pressure region. And therefore at, if you take any horizontal line inside the fluid, the pressure over there must be same and therefore the pressure forces acting on this surface is the same as the pressure forces that is acting on this surface and hence by symmetry we can see that the horizontal component of pressure forces that acts on this uh, surface ADC cancels each other out. So they will have no component towards the normal reaction. Okay, so now the question is what about the atmospheric pressure? Okay guys, so the atmospheric pressure will contribute to a net force of zero. So what I'm trying to say is if you forget about uh, fluid pressure for a while, even inside the fluid, uh, if I have to write the pressure at some point, it will be P0 some value, right? Separate out that some value, then we can say that the atmospheric forces are acting at each point with the same magnitude P0, right? So, and therefore by symmetry, we can say that the net force by atmosphere has to be zero. So if you add up all the integral PDA terms due to atmospheric pressure, then that will cancel out. So we can just work with the gauge pressures here uh, in order to write the normal force and stuff. We can just work with gauge pressures here. We can just ignore atmospheric pressure altogether. Okay. So the thing is we discussed that the net pressure force due to fluid on the surface ADC will be zero. So who's providing the horizontal force here? And the answer is the fluid pressure acting on this surface AB. So this will clearly have a horizontal component which will have to balance N in order for the body to be in static equilibrium. Okay, so now why is there no force here? Because remember guys, we are ignoring atmospheric pressure, right? So the gauge pressure on this part BC is exactly zero. So it's as good as saying it's vacuum over there. So no pressure. So now how do we find out this horizontal pressure over here? Let's discuss that. Okay guys, so if you guys have seen some of my fluid static videos in that, in those videos I've discussed a result actually. Imagine a surface that lies inside the fluid, something like this. And if you want to find the fluid pressure force on this surface, remember guys, this is a flat surface, okay? So that comes out to be pressure at the centroid of this surface multiplied by the area of the surface. So let's say if this is a rectangle with length L and width B, then the area becomes LB and the pressure at the centroid will depend upon this height, right? So let's say this is a centroid and the height of the centroid is HC. So the gauge pressure at the centroid is rho GHC. This is the gauge pressure force that is acting on this surface. 
but in our current problem we have that we have the bottom triangle but we also have a semicircle right so how do we write write the force on that semicircular surface and for that we are going to use a trick so let's say this is some arbitrary curved surface inside the fluid and the fluid applies pressure forces in this particular direction and so clearly we can see that the net force on the surface will have an x component and also a y component right so how do we determine that so one way is you can write down pressure function and integrate the x components and the y components separately there is a neater way of writing this and that method is you actually take the fbd of the fluid surrounding this surface okay so let's say this is the fbd of the fluid surrounding this surface so by newton's third law we can argue that the surface exerts a force of minus fx and minus fy on our fluid right another thing is we can simply do a force balance on this on this fluid element we have the weight of the fluid acting over here there will be some pressure forces uh, acting on this surface over here and there will also be some force acting on this horizontal surface here now the thing is the advantage of this is that we can directly write fx as the resultant of these forces and this we actually know right this will be equal to the pressure at the centroid times the area of the surface so and similarly on a horizontal surface we know that the pressure is constant so we can say the pores acting over here is just the pressure multiplied by the area and and if you add the weight also you'll get fy so we are going to be using these ideas in this problem i'll be explaining more as we are solving the problem okay guys so continuing with the problem uh, as we discussed adc has no horizontal component now the only horizontal component will be because of ab okay guys, so let's say if the force applied by the fluid on the surface it affects towards the right and F fy in the down direction and as i explained earlier the way to determine this is you you take a fluid fbd surrounding this region so let's separately draw that okay so let's say this is the fluid fbd guys so by newton's third law we can say surface uh, applies a force of fx and fy something like this now remember guys we're working with gauge pressure so the gauge pressure acting on the top surface is essentially just zero okay so and the thing is the gauge pressure at this point is zero the gauge pressure at this point is rho g r right because this point is at a height of r below the fluid surface now guys this surface over here essentially is a rectangle so i'll show you guys a side view of it from the side view it looks something like this so this side length is r and this inner side length is l and we know how to write the force on this surfaces like this which is actually the pressure at the centroid which is which we know is at a distance of r by 2 right so the pressure at this point is rho g r by 2 and we multiply by the area of this cross section which is essentially l multiplied by r so in one step we can get fx as rho g r by 2 which is the pressure multiplied by the area of the cross section which is l r and this comes out to be rho g r squared l divided by 2 explaining did take some time but you can directly write this if you know the concepts so the option b is actually correct now in the third option they're asking the net pressure force exerted by the liquid on the slant surface adc so okay guys so from the side view this is simply a rectangle so let's say this is a surface ad so the width of this rectangle is 2r and the length of the rectangle is l so now we can use the submerged surface result so now the centroid of this surface is over here that is at a distance of r from a right so let's name this point as c and the distance of c from a is actually r so the height of this point C from AC, we know this angle is 60. So this is going to be R sine 60, which is R root 3 by 2. So now the pressure at the point C, um, and again, we are talking about gauge pressure, is going to be rho gr 1 plus root 3 by 2. Now the force acting on this surface, let's call the force as F. We can write it in one step as the pressure at the centroid, the area of the submerged surface. So this is rho gr 1 plus root 3 by 2 times the area. Area is going to be L multiplied by 2R, right? So this is 2LR. And by symmetry, we can say that the force on this is also F only. So this angle is going to be 60. So the net force is going to be 2F cos 60 in the vertical direction, which is essentially F because cos 60 and 2 cancels out. So the net force F itself, which is rho g r squared L times 2 plus root 3. So option C is also correct. If you guys notice something, I did not write the force at the centroid of the area and the reason for that is it is not at the centroid the line of action of the force is actually below the centroid and uh, as we don't have any torque analysis in this video i'm not going to discuss it but do keep in mind guys the force is not at the centroid okay now let's talk about d which is the weight of the object okay so now the weight of this object is going to be balanced by the net pressure forces in the vertical direction if you remember there is some fy component that fluid applies on ab where there will be some vertical forces that fluid applies on adc which we actually calculated right net vertical force came out to be this particular value option c basically so if we find out fy then our weight is pretty much done so that we can find out from our discussion on this page right so now as i discussed earlier the gauge pressure force on the top surface is actually zero so fy will be equal to the 
weight of this fluid element which let's just call it as w so now the weight of the fluid element is going to be rho vg and uh, this would be equal to rho g times now the volume of the element so this is essentially going to be a cuboid cross section is going to be a square of side length r and the length of the cuboid is l so the total volume is r square l we have to subtract the contribution due to the semicircle that is pi r square by 4 cross sectional area multiplied by l so fy came out to be this particular value f is in the vertical direction so we can say w equals f minus fy it comes out to be 1 plus root 3 plus pi by 4 and so this is what the weight of the object is going to be which basically means option d is also correct so the answer to this question is a b c d okay guys so that's it for this video do like share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and that's it thanks for watching